Well, we know it's a top issue for voters, Biden's border crisis, and now a stunning report revealing how the chaos at the border, the southern border, has caused turmoil in the Biden White House. This is Outnumbered. I'm Harris Faulkner, here with my co-hosts, Emily Campagno and Kaylee McEnany. Also joining us today, Fox News contributor, president of KA Consulting and former senior counselor to President Trump. Kellyanne Conway is here and Fox and Friends co-host and the host of One Nation and a whole host of other things, too. Brian Kilmeade, hardest working man on television. Tonight, the House is set to hold a second impeachment vote against DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. And this time around, I've been told by guests twice this week, Republicans are going to pass it. They are going to impeach him. They have the votes to do it. Of course, we never know until they vote. White House Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre blasted the move earlier today. They want to continue, continue on the, same, the shameful uh, process of impeaching him. It's baseless. It is baseless. The vote follows a shocking new report from Axios. Boy, they got the people from the inside to talk, revealing how the border has caused infighting between the Biden administration staff. It details major rifts between former advisor Susan Rice and HHS Secretary Javier Becerra. Rice reportedly blamed Becerra for failing to get enough beds for children, calling him an idiot and some other choice words. We're not saying them. It also outlines one particularly tense moment involving President Biden. Here's a quote. Aboard Air Force One, en route to tour the southern border in January of 2023, President Biden sat at the head of his conference table and exploded with fury. The previously unreported meeting recounted by two axios by three people familiar with the events is emblematic of the Biden administration's struggle with the border crisis during the past three years. Infighting, blame shifting, indecision. Kellyanne Conway. Look, when Donald Trump elevated the issue of immigration and border security nine years ago, Harris, he met with international derision, ridicule, castigation and shame. It is now the number one issue. And in our six or seven swing states, it is the top issue to those swing voters. Why? Because now it's in their backyards. Because they know that 8.8 .8 million people is a higher number than the population of 39 states. They know that American citizens' children are being, well, American citizens are being plucked out of their classroom seats and replaced with migrant children who just arrived here. So now it's in everybody's backyard. Every state is a border state. And I think that when the conversation turned from just immigration, which some people still think is about people, and brought it into border security, that's sovereignty, that's national security, it's the drug crisis, it's fairness. And at this point, it's volume. Here's what I don't like about the Axios story and everything that's being said there. I don't like that every time they see a political downside to something, they refuse to touch it. It's political kryptonite, so we can't touch it. Meanwhile, the voters are telling you loudly and clearly this is important to them. Touch it. Rule number one in politics. <laughs> yeah. You don't tell people what's important to them. They tell you. Mm -hmm. They could not be more clear and more vivid. This is an issue that hasn't receded over time. It's actually ballooned over time, mm -hmm. in, time in, in terms of privacy. The other thing that it's important to point out, there were two people, I think, quoted or mentioned as part of that Air Force One conversation with President Biden. One is Jen O'Malley Dillon, Dillon or Dylan O'Malley sorry if I got it, it wrong she now has gone back over to the campaign so I think she's gonna have a lot of reckoning and answering to do why it wasn't important enough as a policy prescription in going to the border in 2023 or on Air Force One in 2023 how's she gonna deal with this on the campaign now mm. uh, let's get to this Axios wrote the rolling chaos along the border has grown to to the point that Biden now is embracing immigration policies he ran against in 2020, such as restricting asylum laws and suggesting he'll shut down the border as the crisis threatens his reelection. Brian. A couple of things. Number one, I'm shocked that they were actually upset that the border broke down. I, I thought it was intentional. And if maybe it is intentional, they want to make it seem like they're upset about it. Number two, is it scary that if they win reelection, it's only going to get worse? This is an election year issue that now, thanks to Governor Abbott and Governor 
uh, DeSantis has become a 50 state issue. Mm. And now I was looking around, we're watching the moped gangs here in New York City. Oh, yeah. they're going to vote very Democrat. Oh, what's going on in Chicago? What's with the sanctuary city? We don't understand it. In Long Island, a special election, they're talking about illegal immigration. Wait a second. The guy running was once Nassau County executive, Democrat. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, this is a 50 state issue. What's scary to me is if President Biden prevails, Mm -hmm. You think it's bad now? All hell is going to break loose because there'll be nothing to govern him or rein him in. So, to that point, Emily, one thing that I've been, been asking about the president doesn't follow the laws now. Mm -hmm. If just because you pass a bill and you put something new in place and he says he can shut down the border and the number isn't 5,000, it's 8,500 on a given day. What makes you think he's going to shut the border then? Why do you think he would ever follow those laws if he won't follow these laws? Right. I, I, I wish that everyone in that party would answer that question or let, at least be asked that. Because at the end of the day, when I think about how millions of Americans have lost loved ones to the fentanyl absolute attack that we've been having surging across the southern border, when I think about how every American family has been impacted in some way, whether you like to admit it or not, your family has been impacted by the surge at the southern border. Despite all that, this party just messages it. The Democrats will tell you you are racist if you bring it up. They'll tell you, you know, in the form of, of slick Gavin Newsom that, well, it's about <clears throat> lifting up others and compassion. They will shut their eyes to the fact that the cages occurred under Obama's administration. They'll shut their eyes to the fact that it is disproportionately affecting black and brown communities with American citizenship. They will shut their eyes to everything that Americans are feeling and screaming to them that they care about. So at the end of the day, all of this, it's already hell. It's already an absolute yes. talk successful that every day is ballooning. But the Democrats will tell you everything's fine and I'm going to shut it down now. And that's what's going to be put on the headlines. And we're expected well, and supposed to just eat it. And you make the point. They tell us that about everything. They tell yes. us the president is fine. Yeah. Have you watched him just in the last seven days? The president is not okay. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, let's get to this and then we'll <clears> talk <throat> about the vice president, who I guess many Democrats don't consider a plan B. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, vice President Kamala Harris's handling of her responsibilities are, quote, a former Biden administration senior official told Axios. She's been at best ineffective and at worst sporadically engaged and not seeing it was her responsibility. It's an opportunity for her and she didn't fill the breach. By the way, in those same meetings that Axios had access to people, the witnesses, they said that she kept saying, but it was just my job to find the root causes. I don't think she was clear on what the goal was. No, she didn't want to accept broader responsibility for the chaos, the fire raging on our southern border that they are completely at fault for. Also, interestingly, in the Axios piece, she apparently has some bad blood, to quote Taylor Swift, uh, with Susan Rice. Susan oh. Rice denies this, mm. but apparently Susan Rice's mm. team faults, or Kamala Harris's team faults Susan Rice for leaking opposition research, so on and so forth. <laughs> one leaked against the other, unclear which. All deny it, but the point is, no one wanted to accept responsibility, and Susan Rice, according to the article, took great pride in the fact that she knew more about the border than Kamala did. So there's all this infighting. It's all about lifting themselves oh, up. Right. And the Axios piece should not be called how Biden board botched the border crisis. It should be called how an abdication of responsibility created a crisis. Biden described as winding process and irritability were making it worse. This guy didn't want to touch this. Immigration was a hot potato. Mm -hmm. Everyone wanted to toss it to everyone else. Jake Sullivan didn't want it, so he gives it to one of his advisors who wow. get this. She requested a memo between the difference between asylum seekers and refugees. These are the people controlling the border. They can't tell you the, the difference between a basic Google search of asylum and refugee. This is an appalling article. They set the board border on fire. It didn't happen to them. They did it. Yeah, with multiple sources, which makes it, in my mind, more important that we get those transcripts from yes. Robert Hur's interviews yeah. with I, I would say we, this. We need to know what he's like behind the scenes. Bingo. Can you imagine Kamala Harris got an assignment and she goes, I'll just do what I want. Yeah, it's like I can't go, imagine. Harris, it. congratulations, you're going to host that number. Do you go, I'll do the A block. Oh, I thought you were the other Harris. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, I mean, you just can't, we, if someone gives you an assignment, it's up to you to streamline it and say what you want to do. But, it's but, crazy. But With a Russian title. Harris. Border czar. <laughs> yeah. Border czar. Oh, my goodness. All right, let's move. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.